I want to go over with you today on this first video in a rather brief fashion the design the, and the use of the C3000. The C3000 is a dual probe temperature scanning instrument. It has a unique ability to measure distance as you scan a person's back when you'll basically be starting for a full spine scan at the sacrum and as you scan up the spine we are measuring where you are as you move. As long as you end your scan, your paraspinal scan, when the probes bump into the occipital shelf, that becomes our reference point when we graph to the computer. What we see here is a chart showing the dermatone areas on the back of an individual that are controlled by nerves exiting various levels of the spinal cord. Here we see a dermatone controlled by the nerve group leaving at T4, T5, T6, etc. At here we see the nerve root controlling the skin area over the scalp as that leaving C2, this area C3. If you look at various charts in some of the books, you'll notice that some don't always show these exact locations, but on a particular individual, if there is a subluxation, the area affected on that person, of course, will always be unique and the same area to them every time, leading to what we'll later refer to as their pattern. What we're measuring when we look at skin temperature, we are not looking at the heat from nerves. We are not looking at the heat from muscles. We are looking at the surface temperature of the skin controlled within five millimeters by the tone of the arterials in that area. The sympathetic nervous system maintains a certain tone in a healthy individual. When there is a subluxation and an area is hyperstimulated, state of stimulation, these arterials are constricted. There's vasoconstriction due to the fight or flight response, as you remember from high school, when the sympathetic nervous system is kicked in. The sympathetic nervous system originates in the lateral cell column in the spinal cord. And what happens, what brings on a hyperstimulation is nerves, sensory nerves, mechanical sense of nerves in the area of the vertebrae sense when there is a misposition or disposition of that bone and they, those sensory inputs come into the spinal cord and they, they stimulate a pre-sympathetic nerve in the lateral cell column. That nerve flows out and into the sympathetic trunk where it synapses with a sympathetic nerve going to peripheral skin and internal organs. When stimulated, that nerve causes vasoconstriction in the skin, limiting the blood flow and thereby causing the skin to appear cooler, as it actually is, to our scanner or to a thermographic camera. When this happens, it is very easy to pick up those areas on the skin where the dermatones have been cooled down by that vasoconstriction. There are other factors that can come into play initially in a injury where soft tissue damage can cause for a 24 hour or 48 hour period vasodilators to be re released in the skin thereby bringing up 
the blood supply to that area, showing a hot spot or a warmer area on the skin. Within a few days, however, those vasodilators dissipate and if the person is still subluxated, let's say from whiplash in a car accident, over the shoulder where the seatbelt was, we'll see a warm area from the initial substance P or other vasodilators released from the soft tissue damage. After a few days, however, when they wear off, if the subluxation is still present, the vasoconstriction effect of the sympathetic nervous system will then bring those areas down and cool them off and we'll get cold readings on our thermogram. The instruments that originally were used in the BJ Palmer Clinic was the norocalorimeter. It was a thermocouple device. I've taken the thermocouples out of this instrument to allow you to see how they function. We'll show a schematic diagram of these shortly. There's a series of wires that swing back and forth between these two sides. Each There's two different wires. They're dissimilar metals. All the cold junctions are on one side. All the hot junctions are on the other side. They're wired in series like flashlight batteries. In a flashlight, when you want more voltage, you put many batteries in series to increase your output. In this case, rather than using just a single thermocouple junction, there's seven junctions wired back and forth connected in series so that any temperature difference between these two sets of junctions will cause a voltage to appear in our output wires. These fit into the probes of the original thermocouple as developed by Dasa Evans, who later became a chiropractor. So Dr. Evans and BJ were the original workers that built and put together the first uh, thermocouple scanning unit. You'll notice that this unit has a connection at its top. This would normally be hooked to a constant glide mechanism so that a doctor performing a scan on a patient's back would hit a foot switch starting a chart recorder, also simultaneously pulling the thermocouple unit up the back at a constant rate so that every location on the back would correspond one-to-one -one with, with a graph point on the graphing mechanism. In this way, very repeatable graphs could be performed on an individual looking for certain patterns that will present themselves when someone is subluxated. I'd like to show you the cross-section and actually the wiring, if you will, of the original device built by uh, Evans, an engineer at the time, before he became a chiropractor. And in this patent drawing, which is the first one in the patent office, you'll find at the bottom of a very large stack of patents on such devices, you'll see the series of connections created by multiple thermocouple junctions. A copper wire coming in, fused, either welded or hammered together, a constantine wire, a dissimilar metal with the different electrical properties, and again a copper wire exiting. If these two junctions are held at the exact same temperature, there is no output and the needle on the recording device remains centered. Any temperature difference between these two junctions would create a voltage here swinging the needle on the galvanometer and also on the chart recorder, allowing us, as this was passed up the spine, to record any temperature differences. 